Hello and welcome to a new video. This is going to be for middle school math, the class I'm teaching that's using the Zeta Math UC curriculum, and this is lesson eight. So we're moving right along through the school year here. We're at lesson eight, which is about the metric system, which we've been talking about. This is the third lesson in the row, in a row about the metric system, but today our topic is going to be on conversion between units in the metric system. And it's labeled as part one. We are not doing part two in lesson nine. Lesson, uh, part two is going to come later on. Um, but this is kind of a, a first look at how do I convert between different units in the metric system. So to kind of review what we've talked about the last two weeks or last two lessons, here is our kind of um, overview of what the metric system looks like with its prefixes. And I've been using, uh, apparently, um, the word unit here instead of base. So those are uh, the same idea, whichever one you want to think of it as. So unit would be talking about meter, gram, or liter, or whatever our, our base is, which is why I use the word base. And then if we are talking about something that's bigger than a meter, we would be talking about like a decameter or a hectometer or a kilometer. Whereas if we're talking about a something smaller than a meter, we could be talking about a decimeter, centimeter, or millimeter. Some of these words are probably familiar to you. You've probably seen kilometers somewhere, centimeters somewhere, millimeters somewhere, regular meters somewhere. If you are in the US like I am, it may not be quite as common as seeing feet, inches, and miles, but we do see them places. We do see these prefixes. So today our goal is going to be to figure out how do I know if I have one of these units, how many of those are equivalent to another unit? Okay, and we call that converting when we do that in math. When you take inches and describe it in feet, or when you take gallons and describe it, describe it in um, cups, those are all ways that we convert things. But today we're just gonna be looking at metric conversion. So what I've done is I've, I've got this uh, chart up here that we're going to use to help us because the reason we like the metric system so much is that it has to do with powers of 10, right? So I'm going to start on the left side here and let's think about something. No, I'm going to start in the middle. If I start with the unit, which is, is has a one underneath it, and then I look at deca, which has a 10 next to it, and it's kind of relating these prefixes to place value, right? How can I get from a 1 to a 10 using an operation in math? There's kind of two answers there. One of them is the one we want. One of them is also technically correct, but not the one we want. You could add 9 to 1 and get 10. That's not what we want to do. We want to think, okay, I can multiply by 10 to get from 1 to 10. Now, the reason we want to think about that is because is it true that to get from 10 to 100, we would do the same thing? Well, yeah. 10 times 10 is 100. And then the same thing is true here. 100 times 10 is 1,000, okay? If we go backwards, or if we, if we start kind of on the right side, we're not actually talking about going backwards, but if we say, okay, is the same relationship true this way? If I take 1 tenth and times it by 10, do I get 1? Well, I have to make 10 into a fraction, 10 over 1 gives me 10 over 10, which simplifies to be 1. So yeah, this relationship keeps being true. It's a little trickier as we go farther to the right to see, but if I do 1 over 100 and I times that by 10, using a dot for multiplication here because I kind of forgot uh, where I was at. So if I do this, I get 10 over 100, and that simplifies to be 1 over 10. Okay, so yeah, this is continuing to be true that between these place values or between these prefixes, the difference between them is that the one on the left is 10 times as big as what's directly to the right of it. Now, how is that helpful? Let's look at this first question. One kilometer equals blank hectometers. It's asking us basically to say, okay, if I have one kilometer, what is the equivalent amount of hec hectometers? So it may be a little bit confusing here if we are looking at this 1,110, blah, blah, blah. Instead, what we need to think is how far apart are these? We're talking about kilometers, 
which is here, and hectometers, which is here. And we just said that the that to get from hectometer to kilometer, we have to times by 10. What that means is that a kilometer has 10 hectometers because they're just one space apart. We want to count the spaces here um, between these to figure out how how big the gap is between them. So one kilometer is equal to 10 hectometers because they're just right next to each other. There's a, a difference kind of between them of 10, of one place value, which is, is worth 10. So then what we can do with that is we can take some other amount of kilometers and figure out how many hectometers there are. So for instance, if I was to ask you, hey, how many hectometers are there in four kilometers? Our first step would be what we've already done here, which is to think, well, how many hectometers are in one kilometer, which our answer was 10. Well, now I've got four, so I'm gonna need to do four times 10 to get 40. So think about that and, and whether or not you feel like that's true. If there's if 10 hectometers is in one kilometer, then for four kilometers, I would have four times as many hectometers, so that gives me 40. So we're gonna do quite a few of these, um, and hopefully at some point you'll be like, okay, this is making sense, and be able to, to kind of work ahead and guess a little bit. I did get a little carried away on using big numbers. <laughs> So keep that in mind. Um, I, I like the whole go big or go home phrase. Um, so keep that in mind when we get a little later on. Some of these end up being kind of big. Okay, so this says on the next one, one liter equals uh, how many milliliters? By the way, you can download this page that I'm using for free on my website. The link is in the description. So how many milliliters are there in one liter? Now, liter is the base unit that we have here. So here's where liters are. Milliliters is over here. So we need to think, okay, how many milliliters are there in just a liter? And if you may have this memorized, actually, depending on what, what all you've done in math before now, uh, especially if you think about the difference between meters and millimeters, uh, but if we aren't sure, we're going to look here and we're going to say, well, how many gaps do I have here? How many times do I have to times by 10 to get from milliliter? I mean, yeah, milliliter to liter. Well, here I have to times by 10, here I have to times by 10, and here I have to times by 10. So what we need to do to get from milliliter to liter is think about 10 times 10 times 10. What is that? 10 times 10 times 10. Well, by the way, it's also the same as saying 10 to the third power. Um, but the way that we can multiply things that end in zeros is actually really cool and really easy. You multiply together the numbers without their zeros. So in this case, it'd be 1 times 1 times 1. But then you just put at the end however many zeros we have. So here's a 0, here's a 0, here's a 0. So this would be 1,000. So there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And there's actually, um, we could use like, th these are Latin prefixes, these smaller ones. And they, um, there's some connection there between like the, the Latin uh, for milli and centi and deci and, and the amount of them that's in just a regular liter or meter or whatever, um, just as a side note. So if there are a thousand milliliters in one liter, how many milliliters would be in nine liters? Well, there should be nine times as many. So nine times 1,000 is 9,000. Pretty easy, right? But we did have to already know how many there were. So in the Matthew C workbook, on the homework, it separates these things into two sections. I thought I was being super clever, making them, you know, be in the same section here. Um, but it actually makes it a little bit trickier when you're looking at it in the workbook because it's going to ask you just to do, to fill in the blanks. And then it's going to ask you different questions where you have maybe a four and a nine and things like that. You still need to figure out how many is in one so that you can figure out how many is in four or how many is in nine or things like that. Um, so 
like I said, I thought I was being super smart and, and clever here, and it kind of backfired a little bit. Let's take a look at the next one. We've got DKG and CG. And one of the things with this is going to be remembering what the abbreviations are. Because up here we've got two things that have Ds, right? Also, DKG is only one way that we sometimes use to abbreviate. DAG is also an accepted abbreviation for decagram. Um, so it just depends on what you're looking at, what they may have used to abbreviate it. But this is this is referring to deca, not deci. I think it's easier to tell whenever they use the K instead of the A. I guess either way, though, deci doesn't have a K or an A. Okay, so we're saying how many centigrams are there in a decagram? Let's go back up here and look. So here is centi. Here is deca. So remember, we're counting the spaces between. There's one space, two space, three space. So just like last time, we're doing 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So we started off in, with, with two different prefixes, but we ended up with the same amount between them because of how far apart they are, which is kind of cool. So in one decagram, there are 1,000 centigrams. Well, if we have 11 decagrams, how many centigrams would that be? It should be 11 times as many. And again, we can use our trick here of multiplying by things that end in zero. We really just need to do 1 times 11, which is 11, and then put these three zeros at the end. So this is 11 thousand. Now let's do kiloliters and deciliters. So how far how far apart are kiloliters and deciliters? I guess I could have left deca. So kilo and deca. Here's kilo. Here's deca. So we've got one spot, two spots. So we should be doing 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. That means that there are 100 deciliters in one kiloliter. Now, if there are 100 deciliters in one kiloliter, then how many deciliters are in 50 kiloliters? Well, we need to do 50 times 100. So our trick is do 5 times 1, which is 5. And then we've got a 0 in 50 and two zeros in 100, so we should have a total of three zeros here, 5,000 deciliters. Let's do HM and MM. Oh, these are far apart. So see, I told you that I um, kind of went with some big numbers here. HM to MM, hectometers and millimeters. How many spaces is this? One space, two space, three space, four space, five space. So if I have five tens, what does that end up being? 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Well, having five tens means we'll have five zeros and then we'll have a one in front. So we should have a one followed by five zeros. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we put our comma after 3 of the zeros, or to the left of 3 of the zeros. So that's a big number, 100,000, because you know what? Mill millimeters are tiny, and a hectometer, I mean, it's not giant, but it's not small either. So I'm just throwing that out there. Let's see, 248 hectometers is how many millimeters? So this is, again, this could be kind of tricky. We have 248 times 100,000. Well, do we know what 248 times one would be? Because anything times one is just the same number again. But then because we've got five zeros here, we're gonna follow this up with five zeros and then go back and put our commas where they need to be. That's a huge number, 24,800,000. That's big. 
let's do uh, this next one, which is one decigram, because it's a regular D without any other letters with it, one decigram to milligrams. One decigram to milligrams. Okay, these are closer together. That's nice. So decigram and milligram. We need to go one spot, two spots. So 10 times 10, which is 100. So there are 100 milligrams in one decigram. So if there's 100 milligrams in one decigram, how many are in 17 decigrams? Let's do 17 times 100, which gives us 1,700 or 1,700. And then finally, one kilometer, how many millimeters are there? This is as far apart as we can actually get on our scale we have here. Just as a kind of by the way, there are more prefixes to the left and to the right because there are things that are, that are big, bigger than a kilometer, right? Um, there are, are distances we might go in space or things like that that are bigger than, um, than what would make sense to use for kilometers. But we, we decided, or we, but we started small here with, uh, with just these kind of six prefixes. You'll, I'm sure, learn more of them later on. So how, how many millimeters are there in one kilometer? So we'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So 10 to the sixth power is what? Well, it's a one with six zeros. So that's, a, that's one million. When we have one with six zeros. Now we're gonna make it even bigger, right? Because there's a million millimeters in one kilometer, but now we wanna know how many millimeters are there in 200 kilometers. So what is one million times 200? I don't even wanna write one million again. So the trick is you do one times two, which is two, and then we need all these zeros. So there's six zeros from a million, and there's two more from the 200. So that's a total of eight zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then go back and put in our comments. That's 200 million. So very clear, right? Why we don't just use millimeters for everything. Why we don't just use meters for everything. The idea here with prefixes with the metric system is to say, if I have something really big, I can use a type of unit that makes sense for that. If I'm talking about distances in space or things like that, I can talk about really big distances without having to use a ton of zeros. But on the other side, if I have something super small, like I'm talking about an atom, which is, is so tiny we can't even see it uh, with, our, with our normal eyes. So if I'm talking about something super small, I can use a prefix that works best for that, um, which would be something even smaller than millimeter. And what that does is it just allows us to, to use units that make sense. Um, and because they all relate back to what a meter or liter or gram is, uh, we're not, and they're all related to powers of 10 also, we're not having to memorize a whole bunch of different things that go in between, like we do whenever we have to memorize how many inches there are in a foot and how many foot there, are, how many feet there are in a mile. And then, um, I mean, I don't know that we even use something bigger than mile, right? Um, we just, you know, talk about distances in miles, even if they're really big numbers. So there you go. Thanks so much for watching, by the way. If you would like to subscribe, that'd be super awesome. You can like the video. I'm going to continue uh, hopefully going on through this Matthew C. Zeta book. Hopefully you're enjoying it as much as I am. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.